Hi everyone, welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. Welcome to the Knitting Turn Pike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm so happy that you're here today. Today we're going to be doing a wrap-up video for a project that I shared with you all throughout the month of December. Um, I had 12 uh, live shows and during the live shows we talked about all kinds of things but one of the projects I showed you guys was a uh, an advent project that I usually knit like every year. This is the MKAL, M-K-A-L, Advent Calendar Stole Project by Bridget Koch. Um, I have knit, this is the third year I've knitted it and the sixth year, sixth year that she's hosted it. And Bridget likes to create these, what they call stoles, which are very long rectangular wraps. Looks something kind of like this. And uh, basically each, there's a, a, a clue that is given for stitches um, every other day. So there's 12 clues and up to up to Christmas Eve and um, then you have a stole and you can finish it and wear it on Christmas Day that's that's the plan that you try to do and this year I was doing the 12 days of knitmas and so a clue would come out every day I had a show and then I would try to knit the clue in, like on the day in between the shows and show it the next time I had a show I also had two other people in this um, family here that knitted this along with me, and that is Teresa Kloppel and Patty Golden, and I shared their clues in the live shows as well. I will be showing the wrap-up of my stole. I will be showing all the clues that I have for Teresa and Patty, and there were some very interesting stitches that happened in the last few clues that I want to show you so at the very end I will do a stitch tutorial now I have done two other videos I think I've shown up through clues one through five in a deep dive type of video like this now the stitches after clue five became kind of interesting I actually learned a few new stitches and I want to share those with you if you do not want to watch the stitch tutorial just stop the video at that point um, I will try to put time uh, stamps in there to make it easier for you to go back and forth if you want to rewatch them or um, skip through them, whatever you want to do. I'm just happy that you're here and I'm excited to share this project with you. Now this is how it ended up looking. You can see how long it is. I think I did share this the other day in a little bit of a teaser, but I will show this up close and you can see how well it nice, how Think it ended up blocking this yarn is a dye diana dye yarn um it is a hundred percent bamboo heavy lace so in between lace and fingering weight and i ended up i had two skeins of this i i used an entire skein which is 694 yards and then i used a smidge of the second skein and i did the math i weighed this on my scale and let me tell you how much that is the yardage that it ended up using it was 1.04 skeins when I weighed it on my, my scale and that turned out to be 722 yards so in case you guys are interested in that and I did use um, the needles that were recommended in the pattern which were US 3 and a US 2 and a half which is a 3 point the 3 is a 3.25 millimeter um, a 2 and a half was a 3 meter the, the smaller needle was used for all these little interlude sections where beads were added. Okay, let's start. Let me get you at the right this end. This where we started. This was clue one. And that's it blocked. And you can see we started with a Pico bind off and with beads. And I'm using a gold Miyake bead um, seed bead at size 6.0. And I thought it went really well with the speckles, gold speckles in this yarn. You can see what that looks like. I will put a still picture as I think you can see the, the lace design a little bit better. Now all of the pictures I have are before this was blocked. So now on these the lace will be a lot more open. When I'm showing this, this is blocked. So the lace and the pictures, still pictures, will be um, not quite as open. But you can see what it looks like before and after. That's after, and then you can see the little interlude section where we knit 
um, use a smaller needle and then add the beads um, every few st uh, stitches to put a nice pop of bling in the stole. Now here is the second clue and this one is called umbrellas. Now my yarn didn't have very great stitch definition on this. It looked better before I blocked it but you can kind of see when it changes a little bit you can kind of see the design still. It's called umbrellas. I can kind of see it like when I turn it like this way a little bit. You know some yarns just don't have uh, the best stitch definition but this is so soft and so wonderful I just wanted to make it with this so uh, the third clue is this one right here this is called vases and if you remember in the vases clue um, there was a new way to do a bobble and that so you can still see those bobbles they're really small but you finish them up before you go into the next stitch which actually which I thought was really clever I believe I have that in the stitch tutorial, but that's the vases clue. And I'll try to show you a picture before, and then you can see it after. All right, and then did you, you do the interlude part every between every clue. Now you could have knit this without beads. You could um, easily just um, knit it, and I believe my friend Teresa, whom, whose clues I'm going to show here in a bit, um, did it without beads. And then Patty did it with beads. So you can get a, a feel for what it might look like without beads. It looks just as beautiful without beads. You know, sometimes you don't want a bead on your your um, knitting. So it's easy to just uh, not do that and just knit it. Now this clue, this next clue, this clue four was very, very time consuming. Now the one thing she did this year that I thought was really interesting is she included a lot more clues. Sorry to get so, so close. She included a lot more clues that had cables. Um, usually there's a little bit, um, I mean there's a nice mixture of things. There's texture, there's lace, there's cables this year. And I think this year there were a few more clues with cables. If you go back, I do have videos for last year's stole, and the previous year is just a finished stole because um, I did that before I started my YouTube channel. So there is a video for um, the, uh, the other two projects that I have made for this Advent calendar stole project. So if you want to go check those out and see, let me know what you think. Do you think this one had a lot more cabling, or do you think the other ones were just as equally cabled? Let me know. This one felt like it had a little bit more. This clue is really beautiful. This is called Diamonds. I don't know if you can see the cables showing up on there or not. I will show a still picture before blocking because you can really see it then. But this is it after. I feel like you can still see it. Lovely clue. There's the interlude. Here's the next clue. And this is called um, Drops. And just so cute and then this is the next clue um, and this one was a little tricky as well more cabling again this is called fishnet and I will insert a picture of it um, blocked and then you can now you can see it blocked and then this clue, I think, was probably one of the hardest. There's always one clue that's really hard. I think four and this one were pretty pretty time-consuming and challenging. Now, this clue seven, and it's called Lantern. And I think it was pretty time-consuming. You can see there was a lot of, the, you can see the wrapped stitches in here, like you were doing cabling, but you also were doing cabling. I don't know if you can see, but every so often there's a wrap stitch in the cabling. So you would have to take some stitches forward on your um, cable needle, wrap them, then you would have to do some sort of knit purl knit or knit the stitches, um, and then finish off your cable. So it was a pretty time consuming, complicated, more comp a little more complicated a clue. But I think it turned out really beautiful. There's a lot of nice texture there. Um, this is clue eight. It's a lacy clue, and it is called um, Candles. And I'll insert a still picture, and then now you can see how beautiful blocking really does open up the lace on this. 
Uh, now we're to clue nine, which is uh, another cabled clue. And this is called framework. I think it turned out really pretty. You can see the crisscross of cables there. I'll insert a clue um, or I'll insert a picture um, with it before it was blocked. And then now you can see what it looks like after it's blocked. Okay, now we're to, to, to clue 10. And I believe, think, think this one's my favorite. Let's see if you can see what this is called before I mention it. And it's a lacy clue. This is what clue 10 looks like. Can you see the angels in there? That's what this clue is called, angels. And I just think it turned out so pretty. I just absolutely love it. Maybe you can see it better if I'm like that. Um, and I'll insert a picture, a still picture. And you can see before and after, but you can still see the angels in there. So pretty. Um, and then clue 11 is a, just a solid texture, kind of like a Gansey. A Gansey um, where you knit and purl the design. Again, my stitch definition is not the best, but I can still see a little bit of the texture, especially if I move it around. Can you see some of the texture there? This is called windmills. And I'll insert a picture before um, I blocked it, and this is after blocking. I'm a pretty aggressive blocker too. I like to open up the lace really well on my um, lace hand knit items. Now the last clue here is we're to clue 12. This is the last clue and that's what it ended up looking like. And this is called icicles. And that's what that looks like. And I'll insert a picture before um, blocking. And now you can see what it looks like after. And you can see here that we, we did the same thing that we did at the beginning. We ended it with a picot bind off with beads. If you do it without beads, you just do the picot bind off without beads. And it makes both ends look the same. Here's the beginning. And here's the end. And you can see it just puts a nice finish. Nice, beautiful edge. That's the beginning. And that's the end. And I um, did not do a video for the Paco cast on or the Paco bind off because um, Bridget's daughter, Astrid, uh, did a video for that. I will link those both of those videos in my description box below if you are interested in seeing how the Paco cast on with beads or without, and it's also shown without beads, and the Paco cast off with and without beads is done. Um, but that is the Advent Calendar Stole Project for 2021. Thank you, Bridget, for such a lovely design. I really enjoyed knitting this. Um, I love the camaraderie. Um, I also really enjoyed this year um, knitting this along with Teresa and Patty. And now I'm going to show their clues. Now, Teresa hasn't finished yet, but the, I'll show her stole up to where I have pictures for her clues. You can see clue one, clue two, clue three, clue four, clue five, clue six, clue seven, and clue eight. Isn't that just beautiful? Her yarn, her yarn has amazing stitch definition. Now let's take a look at Patty's uh, stole. I believe I have all of the um, clues for hers. She's using a Christmas speckled yarn, so red and green speckled with a black iris rainbow bead. Beautiful. And her yarn actually has really good stitch definition too. I have all of the clues for hers, except I do, do not have a finished stole picture of hers. But here we go. Here's clue six. Here's clue seven. Here's clue eight. Here's clue nine. Here's clue 10. Here's clue 11. And here's clue 12. And Patty, you did such a great job. Both of you ladies did such an amazing job. Teresa and Patty, thank you so much for letting me share your clues in my live shows. 
and here in this video. Thank you so much. I really love it when people send me pictures of things that I might be knitting so I can share um, another person's project because I think it's always so much fun and interesting to see how something might look in a little bit different yarn. And I think each one of our projects looks a little bit different but beautiful. So thank you so much for doing that. Now the next thing I have to share are the stitches. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share. I have a tutorial. I believe it's in clues one, maybe both of the videos I did. I'm, I'm really kind of drawing a little bit of a blank. Now the new stitches are, are these. This is the slip, 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 knit stitch. There's a knit three together. There's a stitch called a one to two, which is actually just an alternate knit front and back stitch. It's a great, it's a great thing to know because if you have trouble with the knit front and back stitch, you can do this and it gives you the increase you need that looks very similar to the knit front and back. Some people might have trouble getting into that back loop and this eliminates that. So it's a great stitch to know. And then the next stitch is the three to two stitch where you take the next three stitches on your needle and reduce them to two. So it's another decrease stitch. Everybody, I'm working on this advent calendar stole and this, I'm on clue 10 and there's a lot of really interesting stitches in this uh, design. So I want to be showing you some of these today. Um, the first one I'm going to show you, I'm actually at this point in the uh, stitch pattern. Um, the stitch looks like Let's see if I can show this without showing the pattern. Um, I'm going to be showing you this. Uh, there it is. See how those two chicken feet are there? You have one that leans to the right. Whoops. Sorry, you're not familiar with holding this underneath this like that. The one that leans to the right is a knit three together. The one that leans to the left is a slip, 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 knit stitch. But I, my next stitch is supposed to be that SSSK. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to slip the first stitch. as It's going to be like a slip, slip knit. You're going to slip the first stitch knit-wise. Slip the second knit, stitch knit-wise. Slip the third stitch knit-wise. And then you're going to insert your right-hand needle. I'm sorry, your left-hand needle through the front of all of those like this. And then you're going to knit all of them together through the back loop. And the reason, see it's a left leaning decrease. See how it's leaning to the left. That's why the chicken foot was a left leaning chicken foot. Again, that's showing you how your chart gives you a hint as to what your stitch should look like. So when you see it leaning to the, when I see it leaning to the left, I know it's supposed to do an SSSK. When I see the chicken foot to the right, I know I'm supposed to do a knit three together. Now to do a knit three together, it's really simple like a knit two together, except you do use the next three stitches, insert your right hand needle into all three stitches, and just wrap your yarn around, pull it through, knit, them, knit all three together. And again, it's a right leaning decrease, which is why, sorry, there you go. There, it's a right leaning decrease, which is why the chicken foot leans to the right. That's the knit three together. Come on camera, there you go, knit three together. And that is the SSSK. And I just wanted to show you those real quick. Here's there one of the next stitches. I'm to the point in the pattern. This is an alternate stitch to the knit front and back. You know, when you knit the front and back, you do this. You knit your, you knit into the front leg. And then you take your needle and put it through here. And you knit through the back. And it creates a stitch like that. Where you got a purl bump under the second one. It's an increased stitch. So this stitch is an alternate to that stitch. And I have a yarn over before it. Um, so what you're going to do is, and this is great, you can use this on, on any of your patterns. If you don't like to do the knit front and back, again, this is called a one to two stitch. You're going to insert your right hand needle into your the stitch where you're going to make this, like this, and you're gonna knit. Pull your stitch through. Do not pull that stitch off the left hand needle yet. Then you take your your needle, your right needle, insert it through the back leg of that stitch that's still on your left hand needle, and just slip it off. 
and look at there. Now you have two stitches out of the one. It's a one to two. It looks pretty close to what I just did with the knit front and back, but it was a lot easier. And that's called the knit one to two. Yeah, we're going to take the next three stitches on our needle and we're going to end up with two stitches. So it's a one stitch decrease. And what you're going to do, the first two stitches, you're going to insert your right hand needle through the front leg as if to knit them together because you are going to knit them together. So you knit them together. Do not pull it off the left hand, these stitches off the left hand needle just yet, except the first stitch of that knit two together, you're going to drop it off. Just like that. And then you're going to insert your left, your right hand needle into this stitch, slip it as if to knit. The next stitch, slip it as if to knit. Knit these two stitches together through the back loop. And what you end up with are two stitches out of the three. The first one's from your knit two together, the next one's from your slip slip knit. And that's the stitch. It's called a three to two decrease. The next stitch I'm going to show you is called a central double decrease. You're going to insert your right hand needle into these two stitches as if to knit them together, except you're going to slip them to the right hand needle. And you can see that second stitch becomes your first stitch over here on the right hand needle. Then you're going to knit the next, the third stitch. And then you're going to take those two slip stitches and you're going to pass them over that knitted stitch. And you can see the resulting stitch looks like that. It's called a center double decrease because this, the, a lot of times when you do decreases, they lean to the right or to the left. The center double decrease is just centered. You do not see it leaning either way. That's what it looks like. Those are all the stitches. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, for watching the uh, watching this in the live show and supporting supporting me in this journey. And uh, also, um, you know, for um, uh, being so kind about Teresa and uh, Patty's clues as well. I know that you guys gave them a lot of compliments on live shows, and I enjoy sharing them here as well. And um, and thank you again, ladies, for sharing that with us. I do appreciate that so much. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope you all have uh, been having a nice Christmas, uh, getting ready for your new year. Um, I'm going to be taking a small break. I do have my live show on the 31st um, to pick the winners for December. After that, I, I have maybe a couple of other things, but I'm going to go ahead and get that wrapped up, and then I'll be off a little bit at the beginning of January. But then I'll come back, hopefully reorganized, re-energized, and we'll get ready for 2022. So thank you so much for watching this. I hope you have a wonderful day. And if I don't see you again... If you don't see me on the 31st, Happy New Year. Hope you all have a wonderful New Year's Eve. And I hope 2022 has nothing but the best for each of you. Thank you so much for spending time with me today. I hope you all have a wonderful day. I will see you all very, very soon. Take care of yourselves.